I was in seventh grade, and we had three rules in my household. One was you had to have straight A's, which apparently only applied to me and not my little brother. The second is that you had to play a sport every season, and the third was chores had to be done on Thursday. You did those three things, you could do whatever you wanted. Movies on a weekday didn't matter. I showed up to gym class, realizing, right before Christmas break, I forgot my gym clothes. If you forgot your gym clothes three times, you immediately lost a letter grade, and I was gonna get a B in gym of all things. Kate Sullivan, who we just were those people. We just didn't click right away. We didn't have the same friends group, we never hung out. I was always nice to her, and she came up to me and said, I've got extra gym clothes, and I could do whatever I wanted on Christmas break because of it. So you never know, it's just something little like gym clothes, but you never know how many of those little moments are gonna add up, how many different times you might need to call in a favor or ask a friend for something, that maybe you wouldn't have had that opportunity had you not just been a little bit more kind. You never know what's going on with someone else, so instead of jumping to some conclusion or, re or changing your actions towards that person, it all comes back to you. You are in control of your actions and how you treat others. So be kind. The second is this great story of Dan. Dan the man. Dan graduated college at 22 and he started to, he started working. Now, Dan got a really cool job at this tech company. It was a nice startup in Boston and he didn't have any benefits really through work yet. There, were, there was no 401k. Raise your hand if you know what a 401k is. Awesome. Those are qualified retirement plans. We'll talk about that another time. You can book one through the website. <laughs> but there, um, he didn't have any of that available, but he still wanted to be really smart and safe. So he saved about $5.50 a day, which came out to $2,000 a year. He did that every single year and invested that into a Roth IRA. After 10 years, he had contributed $20,000 into this Roth IRA. And he then got his qualified retirement plan through work. So he stopped contributing to his own plan. Now fast forward, he's about 37. And his friend Karen says, hey, I already maxed out um, my, my other plan through work. What else can I do? He goes, oh, do your Roth IRA. She starts contributing way more than that. She contributes $2,000 a year, but she does it for 30 years, all the way up until she's 67. So Dan only contributed uh, $20,000, 2000 for 10 years, starting at 21, and Karen waited until 37. Not that much longer, but long enough. By having both of those invested at 8% rate of return, Dan had more than double, almost $500,000, while Karen had less than 250. She saved three times the amount that Dan did. What this is so important in showing the fact of is the art and beauty of compounding interest and saving early. How many people save their money now? A couple of hands, that's great. <laughs> so saving is one of the hardest things because it's delaying this instant gratification we're getting. When we get money, whether it's from Christmas, birthdays, mowing the lawn, chores, everything else under the sun, you want to make sure that you're saving a part of that. And you can tell yourself that you're saving this for something, maybe it's a goal that you have in mind. Maybe it's you want to pretend that you're already paying taxes and taxes are going to be to yourself for the future. These things add up so much and are going to have such a bigger weight down the line. The third thing that we'll talk about is the power of courage. And I know high school can be a definitely a test of courage every day, right? All the different things you're exposed to. Uh, coming here tonight is probably, you're gonna be pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, speaking to a lot of different people, having a lot of different exposures to different industries you're gonna have to go through. So I'll tell you my story about courage. And that started in 2020. When I was in Millis, I was horseback riding, and the horse I was on got spooked. She took off at a gallop and bucked while I was in the middle of getting off. So I went flying, I landed on the ground, and I was like, oh, this really hurts. But just breathe through it, breathe through the pain, get up, get back on, run around some more. So I laid there for a minute, the pain just wasn't going away. So I was like, all right, 
you gotta walk this one off. So I started to get up, and my legs didn't move, and my arms weren't moving, and it was that moment that I realized I was paralyzed, I had broken my neck, and I was alone, five acres at the bottom of a hill, surrounded by woods on three sides. And of course, my golden rule is never to ride without your phone. Wouldn't you know it's the one day that I was in a rush and put my phone down right before I got on. Didn't have it on me. So while I laid there for two hours, thinking a variety of thoughts <laughs> in between trying to yell for help, I said, hmm, do I have any regrets? And there's a lot of interesting things. I'm like, I probably could have just died right now. And I thought about that. Did I have any regrets? And I was really happy to come up with the fact that I didn't. Other than experiences that I hadn't yet had the opportunity to have, like having a family or traveling to places I hadn't seen before, there wasn't anything so yet that I had to hold on to. After that, I got life flighted to Boston, spinal fusion, had to go to Spalding. I had to learn how to eat, walk, get dressed, do everything all over again. And for somebody who's hyper-independent, that's quite challenging. One of the biggest moments, though, was sitting in the gym at Spalding, and I was looking around, feeling like just this awesome, why me moment. I was so angry that all this has happened. I had just gotten married, started a business, we're about to build a house, start our family. I was like, I have arrived. The moment has come, like I have busted my butt. I have gone through everything. I built all this myself. I grew up with a single dad, we had a, uh, <laughs> we were in a, uh, the, we grew up in the type of household where when we were having sleepovers in the living room, that meant that we'd run out of heat and so we were gonna have, uh, all my brothers and sisters, whoever's over, we were gonna all have a slumpy in the living room that night. I waitressed my way through college. I rode on the equestrian team. I got a job at State Street Bank. I busted my butt there. All to position ourselves to be able to start our own business and get onto this next chapter. And I'm like, I've already been through so much. I already paid my dues here. I paid my dues there. I busted, I worked, I slaved. And I've gotten to this moment. And that's kind of where the trick is. And I feel like especially with different things that you see on social media, it can get really hard to get sucked into that. Get sucked into this whole, that life is not a game of shoots and ladders. And that's exactly how I felt. I was one square away from finish, and I went shoop right back to one, where I had to have somebody help me brush my teeth. There is no shoots and ladders. Life is not linear, it is cyclical. There is constantly going to be an up and a down, and you are on a circle, it is not a line. And that means you have to keep pushing yourself, because if you really want to achieve greatness, if you really want to succeed in life, which Success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. You need to continuously push yourself out and beyond your comfort zone. If you can tap into this moment of, I can be completely uncomfortable and composed and do something anyway, that is courage. That is going to be the true secret sauce for you to do anything and everything you want in life. And so many people get get to this point, they graduate high school, they go to college, they get a job, now they have bills to pay, they probably get, maybe they get married, maybe they have kids, maybe they get to traveling, but how many of those people are so far away from the dream they had when they were younger? There's so many things that when people come into our office and we have that conversation of what do you really want out of life? What did you want at 18? Where did you want to go? What haven't you done yet? Have you written the book? Have you gone on the cruise? Have you, have you started the dog rescue you've always talked about? Whatever the thing is, people get so far away from that because they all of a sudden get in their comfort zone. And your brain is actually protecting you by making sure you stay there because it doesn't want you to get out of your comfort zone because you could get hurt. And while in the caveman times, yes, that was physical, physical hurt that happened to you, now it's a lot of emotional. It's, it's social, it's political and it's for yourself. It is so easy to get numbed out on your screen, eating, vaping, all these other habits people get into. It's so easy to get sucked into just this routine and then numb out by doing whatever does the thing. Push yourself. 
push yourself so far beyond your comfort zone, you will be able to achieve any and everything. People will be amazed by what you are accomplishing in your life and your career. And that's why I invite you to all, if you head over to our table later, there's, I have sheets for everybody, write down something you're scared of. And if you write down that thing you're scared of, then you go ahead and you start making a plan on how to obliterate that. And maybe it'll always be with you, but at least so that you can handle it. And that you can be uncomfortable or be in that fear and be okay. That is truly gonna push you into the next level and really get you to level up. So I'm gonna push all of you right now. Raise your hand if you're afraid of public speaking. First hand. I invite you to come up here and read this. <laughs> Pass? Who else? Who wants to be brave tonight? Let's go. To succeed, you must overcome your fears, battle your own greed, conquer your own demons, become unsure. Second guess everything you believe in, survive through the suffering to figure out the meaning, and go hard until the moment you bring it home. You might lose sleep, but it's gonna feel like you're dreaming. And this is by Paul Kane. One more question. You can shout it out from there. Did you feel a rush when you just did that? Yeah. Butterflies in your stomach? Oh, really fast. <laughs> Heart was beating really fast, maybe sweaty palms, all these things. He just had a visceral reaction, which is your body's physical reaction to stress. And he did it anyway. And guess what? That's all it is. It's just a feeling. It's just a little sweaty palms. It's just a little heartbeat fast. It's just butterflies in your stomach. These are chemicals in your brain that are just trying to protect you. You can be afraid and do something anyway. It's just a feeling and you are much stronger than that. So don't forget when you're having that moment, take a deep breath, go on TED Talk, watch the Power Stance video. <laughs> and that's really what it's gonna take. So if you wanna really truly succeed, Push past whatever that fear is. Find your fear in you, battle it, find the next one, and battle that one. That's how you get there. <laughs>